Let's try this one more time. Vex Nation, are you ready? <laughs> Dallas and around the world, help me count this down. The World Championship game number one begins in three, two, one, go! 15 second autonomous underway, looking to see if they can go upstairs. Red Alliance, three upstairs, yes sir. Blue Alliance, one out of three on the set. For the Red Alliance, getting two more upstairs. Blue's gotta come up big for the 10. They get a third, Red gets nothing else, and that does it. Based on this, technology gets the 10. Drivers, three, two, one, go. A minute 45 in the championship round. It is a best two of three. And game number one makes a big difference. Triples going up on either end. And they are firing away. Right now, BarkBot's getting there. Shooting up three of their own. Meanwhile, fast and furiously comes down the team from McLean, Virginia, the Potomac School. Happy Haystacks. But they are stuck on the roller. They are unable to move. So their teammates trying to get to them, but 786B says no. They are trapped on the roller. So the Red Alliance here, Cupertino, California, BarkBot's getting there, have free reign to play. They are just stuck, and I can tell you right now, it's on the roller. No, wait, hold on. They get out, they're free, they're back. 50 seconds remaining, Blue Alliance can bring this back. A lot more this inside for the red container. We were looking at the blue, and they come back with a flurry. Happy Haystacks back in the game. 35 seconds left to go. One, another team stuck on the roller as well. Seven, eight, six, eight, six, B. Captain stuck on the roller. They're not moving, so their teammates have to help them as well. They're free, they're back. 25 seconds remaining, down to 20. Here's where the team starts to line up. Set up, crucial in the game for the extensions. Here's where it could come down. Team's end game enabled. Firing away, one red robot will go. They'll switch the roller in the last second. Three seconds, somebody else has to fire. Red will get it, blue will get it. That's the buzzer. Need I say more? Grand final starts off with a bang. And we're down to see what score and what team takes the lead in the series. Grant, over to you. Thanks so much, Keegan. Well, speaking of people that need no introduction, I'm here, you know him, you love him. It's the man, Dan Mance. Dan, what'd you think of that match? So I was surprised at the comeback. When they got hung up on the roller, I thought it was over. And then they managed to uh, free themselves and ends up being really close. I'm interested in what the final score will be. Yeah, I, I like that in the final match, the final couple of matches of the season, we have some Team Catapult, some Team Flywheel. Um, it, it really shows the dynamics and the diversity of this game. Um, is that kind of what you saw? You went to way more events than I did. Uh, is that kind of what you saw over the course of the season? Like, how this game evolve? Yeah, and that's what I liked. I went to the Mall of America at the very beginning of the year, right? And it was a really good match, a uh, really good event for early season. Um, but I was actually surprised how people were scoring. And I, what I like is how the season evolved. You got two primary designs with catapults and flywheels, but there wasn't one dominant design. And I also like how, as the season progressed, Good defense, not just sloppy defense, but good defense really could st uh, really swing a match this year. I thought that that's kind of what we want when we see these games, right? So for sure, was there was there anything that surprised you or that that popped up that you were un that was unexpected? Yeah, I think the biggest surprise for me this year is I really thought that the end game would evolve differently. Um, I really did. I mean, once we got a uh, string of game, Albert get him, right? It's like that kind of is what stayed. But I really thought we'd see some robots that would kind of deploy and block tiles, and that would be more of an end game, and we didn't see that. You know, we did see, there were some blocker bots out there in the divisions. I caught a couple. I took some pictures of some. I, I even saw my favorite, I think it might be my favorite robot of Worlds. There was a team with a mini bot that deployed. Did you get to see that? I got to see that one, yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, here on the Dome, none of that quite made it. It's all string all the time. Uh, so, you know, uh, that's how cookie crumbles sometimes, I guess, yeah. I suppose. 
Um, so as you, you know, went to all these events, you talked to all these teams, um, I already asked you if there was anything that surprised you. Was there anything that particularly inspired you? Like, because again, you see more events than pretty much anybody else, including Zaya. Um, <laughs> was there anything that really stuck out and inspired you, kept you moving on to each event? Yeah, I think this year, uh, you know, to be frank, I really liked that we didn't have that one dominant design. You know, we believe in uh, the design process and we know that our students are out there and they're looking at the top robots from events, but it's still refreshing at the end of the year when you could go to an event and you saw the, the different types of shooters, the different types of uh, intakes. Um, but what I always am the most impressed about is the maturity of our students. I mean, as I, as I traveled this year,